Snackers, Matt DiNapoli here. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Hello, Snackers. Kareem Iskander. I'm a lead technical advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. Welcome to episode 96 of Snack Minute. Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute bite of learning covering tech, coding, and just some cool stuff that we do. And the cool thing, this is probably the coolest thing we've ever seen. Um, we're gonna, I'm excited about it. I this mean, movie. it's it's the most popular thing in the world, apparently. I, I read it's the fastest application to like 60 million users or, or the most users in a 60-day period or something like wow. that in history. I can see why. I can see why. But we're the, enough about... of the anticipation. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> I, I that was all a big drum roll yeah um so today we're talking about uh chat gpt with our good friend uh john capobianco so john if you don't mind introducing yourself and then telling you telling us how you're going to be using chat gpt today great well thanks for having me back john capobianco i'm a developer advocate for the cisco training boot camp team and uh, you can check out our work on our landing page about our boot camps we deliver instructor-led training deep dive labs and a variety of topics and uh, one of the tools we use is Pi ATS, is something actually that we train our students inside. And what I got thinking about, Matt, was I use Pi ATS for pass fail things on different inter network stuff, configurations, and state of the network. Well, what if a test, when it fails, we send the questions to ChatGPT, the AI, and see what the AI thinks about that failure? So if people haven't seen ChatGPT, let's do a quick question here in the GUI, the web interface, right? So what is a Cisco Snack Minute? And we're going to ask it this, what is a Cisco DevNet Snack Minute? And it's going to come back and say, Cisco DevNet Snack Minute is a series of short, informative videos produced by Cisco DevNet. Each episode of Snack Minute covers a specific topic related to software development, network automation, cloud computing, cybersecurity, and other areas of interest. You get the idea, right? So, and it comes down to Cisco DevNet mid videos are available for free on the DevNet website, YouTube. Now we're gonna have to update this with some new verbiage and branding, but you get the idea, right? So now what I'll show you. Where are our names? Sort of, Hold yeah, on a oh, second. What, what's, yeah. what's wrong yeah, with that? It didn't, yeah, How I closed it. It didn't, it didn't give you guys personal credit as the hosts, <laughs> I know. <laughs> No, I think that's our fault. I don't think that's Chat GPT's fault. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, so then I got thinking about here's this integration. Now, don't be overwhelmed by the Python, but we import Open API. That's Never all are. we need to do, right? We open API key. We set our key, and I use an environment variable to keep that safe. And now that's all we really need. So now let's take a look at input discards, and. If there, right, so I set a counter threshold of zero, and then I go get the restconf API interface for input discards as my counter, and I say if it's greater than, fail the test. Well, let's fake it and say if it equals, equals. Now, before I run this, what we're going to do is look at, right, if it failed, and if they have an API key, call this chatGPT function. And here's, it's so simple. Response. We're all similar. We've all set up requests as response equals, right? Well, in this case, it equals an open API chat completion create, which is its own little function that takes the model. And I'm still on 3.5 here. I haven't shelled out the 20 bucks yet to get version four, but I plan on doing that soon. And then the messages, and here I say, the system, you're a chat bot. User wants to know, what is a Cisco interface input discard? And I ask it several questions. Now, this is where it gets fun. I say, I follow up with another question and explain it like I'm five. And then I have a couple more questions here. That's what why? I mean. Why is a little more philosophical of a question. Why would I get in interface input discards? And then what show commands are related to it? And finally, how do we fix it? Now let's run the code and, um, you know, everyone say a quick prayer to the demo gods, but everything's worked so far. And you're going to see here that here's discards and it's failing. Now we're not, now I, we're going to see the, the, the answer come back in the console. I'm going to show it in a few different places. So let's just let this test fail. But if you have a keen eye, you can see right here, this is ChatGPT's answer to our first question. What is that? And then we say, explain it like I'm five. And don't worry, we'll see this text in WebEx. It'll be easier, easier to read there. And then we ask it, 
Um, why would I get it? And here's some philosophical answers. What are the show commands? And here come the show commands. Matt and Kareem, I don't know if there's an asynchronous version. I don't know if I can make this faster. It, it, it thinks. It's like it takes time for this brain, this AI, to come back with our answer. If, if, I, if I go to my PyTS logs, well, check it out. Now, right as part of my failure in my logs, I have the AIs answered oh. all those questions. And my user, my operators, maybe my junior staff or my right people that are going to consume this at the front line. Well, now they have context. What is it? Explain it like I'm five. Give me some show commands. How do I fix it? Now, let's look at this so we can actually read it. Now, using some magic, I send it into WebEx. Right? So now I have all this in real time. The device sandbox has interface input discards. And here's its answer. And you kind of wonder, how good is it? Well, it really is good. Indication inbound network traffic has been discarded due to insufficient buffer space in the network's input queue. This can be caused by bursts of traffic, incorrectly configured packet filter, or an ACL. This can lead to poor performance. And then here's the five-year-old answer. Okay, so imagine you have a big box of toys and you want to put them all back in the proper place. Sometimes you accidentally drop a toy on the floor and can't put it back where it belongs. That's kind of what an input discard is on a Cisco interface. And then here's the show commands, and then here's how to fix it. Could you have taken the suggested show commands to, to remedy that issue and push it back to the device via PyATS? You set it up. You set up my next use case. I'll show you that. <laughs> hang on. Hang on to that thought. If, That's if this exactly didn't, if this didn't jam next. up a bunch of people's jobs to begin with. <laughs> right. Well, just wait. Just wait. Wait till you see what I do next. And that, Kareem, you, you're like, you've, you've teed it up perfectly. But, but beyond that, any other general thoughts, ideas, comments, guys, so far? I really, so I do appreciate the fact um, that you've, thought about where this could be potentially useful um, other than just being generally useful. Um, you know, you've now given someone who can go in um, three opportunities for troubleshooting without them a necessarily having seen this before um, and not having the requisite knowledge in place um, to understand those things. Because as we all know, when we're dealing with um, tech troubleshooting or we're going through uh, and we're trying to improve our mean time to resolution, um, you know, previous experience in these spaces always helps. And so having that information, I mean, just for this uh, issue specifically, having that information literally pushed out for you as part of the air, we don't have to spend an hour and a half doing research. The research has been done for us, which is fantastic. I would echo all that. I, that's one of the things I thought was, was very interesting. I've been the senior network engineer and at times, and you feel for them, the people at the front, when they reach out and all they need is a simple show command and you're thinking, geez, like it's 3.30 in the morning and I have to answer, have you tried show IP interface brief or whatever? Well, now it's right there. It, you know, it literally says, try these things, right? Here's what the problem could be. So now, Matt, uh, uh, Kareem, to your point, let's, let's set up CRC interface failures. Now this one, I'll run it and I really hope it works. But again, this is not a perfect technology and I don't always get the same answer back. But I, yeah. but I'll, but we'll try it. And if not, I have the Martha Stewart. I have the logs of a working one written down that I'll show you the logs of this working. So here, what I'm going to say, my question is going to be here. This is where it gets interesting. You are a code generator, You're not a chatbot. You're a code generator, and I want you to respond with code only and no notes and no replace. And I ask it for a JSON array of REST conf APIs using op open config yang for interface input CRC errors nuts. with no, right? So, so the theory is, and I'll show you the code here, is that, so the results you get back, by the way, are always gonna be wrapped in the three hash marks. Like when you're writing your own right. markdown and you put tick, 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 tick console. So I read yep. that out and then I JSON load that string that chat JPT comes back with. This JSON results has a valid JSON array in it that then I loop over and make, you can see here, rest.get, make the call to the API that ChatGPT is suggesting we call. So let's run this again. And I really hope it works, but if not, I have a, and why wouldn't it work, John? 
because it might not come back with the right answer, the right structure of JSON. Yeah. It's not a hundred percent. And that's, that's what, that see. is one thing I noticed and made me feel a little bit better about our jobs is that there's some assumptions that you're making in that code um, about how the uh, interface, uh, the API interface is built and what chat GPT can and might give you back. So that, that makes sense. Yeah, it's not a, like a high fidelity database that you're going to get the same answer every single time. It's always variable. So it should happen in just a second here, guys. These are just the other questions I'm asking it about it in, in input discards, or sorry, excuse me, CRC errors. But I have seen this work multiple times. Okay, it's the next API call. Drum roll, please. And what we should get back is a JSON array. All right, so let's let's go into the logs. Let's go into the logs. I'm pretty sure that we have a success here, right? So PyETS logs view. And actually, I could even check the WebEx room. So there is the JSON payload that it came back with. And if I go to the log file, 665, here we go. Look it. So it says, we asked ChatGPT for a JSON array. You guys saw my question. Well, here is the JSON array it came back with. And that is what I want. Open config interfaces interface. Now here's my PyETS automatically using that. ChatGPT recommended we get the following API data. And there's the API. And then there is the JSON payload of the get command it recommended we run right in our logs. That's awesome. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And so right? This is yeah, it's it's Terminator. We we got term it's Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the, the 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 endless possibilities with this is just is just mind blowing to be honest with you. Like I can think of like five different use cases right now just watching this. What's the like we can build. give us ten episodes of DevNet or of Snack Minute? <laughs> right. <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> Start building that for like. I mean, can you imagine like just Cisco TAC for instance leveraging this just to. Keeping up with um, the the ticket no, uh, notes and the resolutions and closing out these tickets super quick, like just 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 it's mind blown. So yes, my example was kind of surgically PyTS against counters, right? Um, this could very well be an API call against Firepower Threat Defense and some API data or ACI or DNA Center or um, right, like it, it could literally be whatever you want. And it, the nice thing is in the workflow, like if you are a PyTS user and you have failed test cases, it's another API call. Like you literally just adding one more API call to your workflow. And now as you see, it's logged. I can send it to WebEx. I can actually have it give me code to execute. Like Kareem, what if we say, give me a .py file of a pain test or, or like whatever you want, right? Like think of this, as not maybe a toy anymore, but a tool. And I think we have an opportunity since it has a Python library and an API to help us, right? Like you've seen today, I have, I'm writing PyTS tests against my network. I can now make sure that your corporate people agree with this and that you can make these API calls and they can not leave, you know, uh, we wanna be very careful here with this tool. Don't go out and just start using this against your production network. One of the things that people need to also learn and understand, especially, you know, snackers out there, they're going to go using, start using this is it learns from what you do. So anything that you share with it, it captures that, right? So don't go out sharing your like, here's my source code of X, Y, and Z, and what's the error or whatever, or like optimize it. Like, don't do that because now it has captured your source code for whatever that you're using. And this is something that I think a lot of people overlook. Yeah, and as you, as you can see, my questions are very open-ended and agnostic and have nothing to do with it. I'm not saying, here's the serial number from my switch. Uh, is it under, is it under um, you know, service or whatever, right? Or am I under contract? <laughs> right, it, it, I'm just generally saying, what is an interface error? What is a CRC error? What does a half duplex interface mean? All these different things. But it could, it could be in our imagination, and it took me a long time to get the keywords right here. This has only been out since November. So give your you know give yourselves a break. It's it's literally this is bleeding edge stuff that we're dealing with today. Yeah, uh, John, thanks for joining us yet again on another Snack Minute. Uh, snackers, go check out 
uh, chat GPT, but caveat emptor for sure. <laughs> and uh, that's all the time we have for this episode today. And we'll catch you guys next week. Thank you, Snackers. Thanks, John. This was fun. Hey, no problem. Thanks for having me again.